Greetings. This is Jerry Revere from the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. Today we're going to be looking at implementing IPv6 within a system platform environment. The agenda for the video today is as follows. You will see demoed the key screens of implementing IPv6 during the initial install of system platform. We will then take a look at the implementation just completed in the CDOM web console. Lastly, we will look at what has to be done to enable IPv6 on an existing System Platform 6X system. Please note, we will be seeing the provisioning of a System Platform 6.2 in the following screens, which includes the Services domain, also known as the SVM. If you should be enabling IPv6, in a system platform release 6.0, those screens will not be present. Let's start by examining the initial install of system platform. To begin, we need to boot the server from the system platform DVD. After the server has booted from the system platform install media, and we have connected via the services port or using a monitor and keyboard to start the installer, a few screen selections have been made to reach the screen that is shown here for the system platform to domain zero IP addressing parameters to be entered. The IPv4 addressing will be entered on the upper half of the dialog for domain zero and then tab into the IPv6 enabled section of the dialog to enable IPv6. Press the spacebar to enable which is now illustrated by the asterisks being shown. Now the IPv6 address, prefix, and IPv6 gateway can be entered. Note, the prefix would be 64 as the accepted standard for most IP addressing situations. This equates to a subnet mask in IPv4. Leave the enable IP forwarding enabled, tab to the OK, press the space bar to advance to the next screen. Press the spacebar to accept the Enable IP Forwarding question to advance to the next dialog. This screen allows for the console domain's IPv4 addressing to be entered. Tab into the IPv6 address, enter the IPv6 address and its prefix. As previously stated, that would be generally 64. Tab to the OK button and press the spacebar to advance to the next screen, which is the Services Domain dialog. If the SVM is to be enabled, perform that step here. Enter the IPv4 address and enable IPv6. Enter the appropriate IPv6 address and prefix. The steps to find up to this point are all that is required to provision IPv6. Finish the rest of the system platform install screens and allow the installer to complete the install. Now let's look at the completed install from the network configuration dialog in the console domain of the server just installed. Starting at the top of the network configuration screen, the enable IPv6 heading shows that IPv6 is enabled. Next, the IPv6 address of the default gateway we assigned in the initial install is displayed as well. As we slide down the screen, note the IPv6 address assigned to DOM0 and the console domain. Finally, note the IPv6 address that was assigned to the services domain. All the addresses shown here were enabled by the initial system platform install process we just completed. Let's consider the case now where there is an existing CM6X platform where the customer is asked to have IPv6 enabled and provisioned. Let me show you what the network configuration screen would look like to enable IPv6 and the resulting entries to be provisioned. To enable IPv6, click the checkbox to enable all the interfaces. This applies to the installed template interfaces as well that support IPv6. 
Note that this requires a system reboot, which I am starting now. As you can see, the message given at the top of the screen, the settings were updated, and the system is rebooting. I'll continue after the reboot completes. The reboot has now completed and we are looking at the network configuration screen again. We now see that IPv6 is enabled. We now have open fields to provision the IPv6 addressing of all components of system platform and the installed template. The default gateway field, DOM0 and CDOM, the services virtual machine, Finally, the CM template fields of the CM virtual machine and the utility server. Provision in these fields the addresses defined by the customer, and then a final restart will be needed to make those addresses active. In a future video, we'll look at the key CM screens where IPv6 addressing will have to be defined. Thank you for your time today. We hope this information was useful. We welcome your comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at avaya mentor. Thank you for choosing Avaya.